Level 6 uh, Final Year Project Toolkit. This series of uh, lectures will bring together resources to help to give you a guide and the building blocks that you need so you can successfully develop your own research projects. Developing a research project begins at the very beginning with developing your research idea. Yes, this may sound very obvious, um, but it actually at this stage is the bit that needs the most thought to ensure that the building blocks are right at the beginning so that you don't have to go back and make costly repairs at a later stage. This particular slide series will introduce the research process and examine the beginning part of this process, which is about developing your research question. Further slide series within this module will examine other stages of the research process. So to start with, what is the research process? Well, we start off with the planning stage of your research project. And the first step is putting thought into working out exactly what it is you're trying to investigate and why. So selecting an area of research and justifying why it is an area worthy of investigating. Is it a new area that you're aiming to research? Are you developing and adding to the knowledge of an existing area? Um, and what you don't want to be doing is reinventing the wheel and repeating something that has already been done, unless of course there is a real cause to do so. Reviewing existing literature, knowledge and research in the field is a useful step here and literature reviewing, in, literature reviewing is examined in more detail um, in slide series 3 of this research project toolkit resource. Following this you can develop a research plan that will help you to develop your research to answer your questions. So once the area of research has been identified, the main stage of the research process is to translate this research area into a clear and focused research question or questions. And with quantitative research, what we're really thinking about here is about uh, hypothesis testing. The formulation of a research question or questions is often the result of a process of critically reviewing the existing research within your area of interest. So that's thinking about what has already been done, how it was achieved, what the conclusions were, um, and whether the results actually impact on the choice of the questions you're thinking about to investigate. Discussing the issues with professionals or experts within the area um, that you're thinking about researching often further helps to hone your ideas. And of course, your own background, whether that's professional or educational, and your own theoretical and practical knowledge will have some bearing on the choice um, of questions that you might be interested in. The research process um, is adopted to fulfil objectives and to answer the questions posed by the research project and those are based on either um, a deductive or an inductive approach. A deductive approach is based on what is known about the research area, deducing meaning for particular individuals or cases by developing a hypothesis or hypotheses for testing. So developing given what you know, a theory or theories and then testing them through some form of observation. To do this successfully, a researcher needs to operationalise uh, these types of concepts to try and then make a hypothesis. So operationalising is about defining how your data is going to be collected to test the concepts that you're outlining in a hypothesis. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this shortly. An inductive approach is the opposite to deductive and it's about making inferences from research findings about theories. A research plan um, or strategy that is deductive is typically associated with uh, when we think about quantitative research and a quantitative approach. Um, an inductive uh, strategy we tend to think about when we're thinking about qualitative approaches. However, this division is actually only typical and is not exact. Qualitative research does not necessarily have to generate a theory and often theory um, actually is used as a background to developing qualitative research strategies. And of course, much research actually uses a mix of quantitative and qualitative research strategies, or what we call mixed method research, and we will revisit this concept later in uh, the lecture slide series of this module. Of course, not all quantitative research involves hypotheses. For example, a project may actually be about quantifying a particular population rather than testing different variables within it. Indeed, with qualitative research, hypotheses are not usually tested as we're usually trying to find out more in-depth information about the population being looked at. However, just like quantitative research, qualitative research will use clear research questions to guide the development of the research. 
to test relationships between variables or differences between groups, there is a need to first operationalize our concepts that are contained within those hypotheses. It is great to have concepts that you wish to test, but you need to think practically about how they're going to be measured. How can they be measured and what is the most appropriate way of doing so? As an example, with a hypothesis that has age as a relationship um, with increased fear of crime, here, in that particular example, we need to actually define what is meant by each, each concept. What do we mean by age and what do we mean about fear of crime? So how can those be measured? So for age, we're about defining the concept of age. Are we looking at all ages or are we looking at particular age groups um, within society? Um, and if we're thinking about um, fear of crime, it's about defining this type, of com com uh, this type of concept. Something like fear of crime is a little bit more complex and we do have to spend a bit of time thinking about that. What do we actually mean by fear? Um, is it something as broad as just a feeling of being fearful of crime or are we looking at something more specific um, than that? And when we're thinking about crime, are we looking at all types of crime or are we trying to look at something in particular? Once we have those concepts nailed down, we then need to be sure that practically these variables can be measured. Um, variable, what does a variable mean? We've said variable a lot. Um, a variable is just simply um, an attribute on which each case varies. Cases um, are of course people. Okay, We go out and we interview and we survey people. But cases can actually pretty much be anything. They can be organisations, businesses, communities, schools, even countries. When using a hypothesis in research and trying to test for a relationship between the variables in question, then variables need to be thought of in terms of independent and dependent variables. The variable that has the causal impact is the independent variable, and the variable that feels the effect is the dependent variable. So in the example shown here, the causal relationship that is being examined is whether age has an effect on income. Age is the independent variable, and income, the, and income dependent on age, so it is it is the dependent variable. The knowledge of which variables are independent and dependent starts to become of real importance when you come to analyse your data and to find out mathematically how much impact there is on one variable from another. In addition to knowing whether variables are independent or dependent, a further important issue in thinking about quantitative data is about the type of variable. There are four types of variable, and these are based on the level of mathematical precision with which the values of a variable can be expressed. And those are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. A nominal, or categorical variable, as it's known, um, they use categories that cannot be ranked in order. Each category is just different. The categories available can't be placed in any form of order and no judgment can be made about the relative size or difference from one category to another. But what does this actually mean? Basically it means that with this kind of data there are no mathematical operations that we can perform on that data relative to each other. Therefore we think of nominal variables reflecting um, qualitative differences rather than quantitative ones. On this slide here you'll see an example of what we mean by nominal variables um, and these show two different variables that uh, obviously can't be placed in order and no judgments can be made so if we think about what is your gender male female they're just they just exist you can't um, place male um, in front of female or the reverse um, second one there we can see did you enjoy the film yes or no either you did or you didn't um, you know you can't place these in order um, the example variables that we have here have only two possible responses, first one male, female, second one yes or no. These are actually known as what we call dichotomies. Um, and it should be noted that systems for measuring nominal data must ensure that each category is mutually exclusive and the system of measurement needs to be exhaustive. Um, by mutually exclusive we actually mean that each observation, whether that's a person, case or a score, cannot fall into more than one category, so either you did enjoy the film or you didn't. Okay, And for exhaustive, it means that the system of categories should have enough categories for all the observations. So um, again, whether you enjoyed the film, either you did or you didn't, there's you can't be in any other form of category and there's no other categories that you need. 
For ordinal variables, ordinal variables, um, they work with the same assumptions as nominal ones, but they are more complex in that here, while still comprising categories, now the categories themselves can actually be ranked in order, i.e. one category has more or less of some underlying quality than being in another category. What does this mean? It means that we can make statistical judgments about the relative position of one value to another and we, we can perform some limited mathematical calculations. On this slide here you see an example of what we mean by an ordinal variable. So we have how satisfied are you with the level of the service you've received and you've got um, a scale from very satisfied to very dissatisfied. Of course as you can see the possible an um, answers can be ranked from very satisfied to very unsatisfied so they can be ranked in some form of order. Still however you'll notice that actually the distance between each category cannot be calculated. So you can't say with any precision that the distance or difference between being somewhat satisfied and very satisfied, you can't actually measure that distance. What one person thinks of as being very satisfied may be somebody else's idea of being somewhat satisfied. Ordinal variables can obviously be ranked. Um, and that is similarly to, similarly to that interval and ratio variables that oper they also operate on a mechanism of scale. Um, the key difference here is that with interval and ratio variables, the variable that we're looking at is always numeric and it has numerically equal distances between each category. So for example, um, a 5 centimeter difference in height between 150 centimeters and 155 centimeters is always 5. Okay, so if you look at the difference between 15 centimeters and 20 centimeters, the difference in that is 5. So imagine a 30 centimeter ruler. It shows equal distance between each marker. Okay, so there are 10 1 millimeter markers between each centimeter. Interval, um, if you think of an interval variable, okay, interval variables, um, they have a they're measured on a continuous scale and they have no actual true zero point. Okay, so if you think about temperature, temperature is measured on a continuous scale, um, but it actually has no true zero point because there is, whilst you have zero degrees, that actually still measures the temperature. Okay, you don't ever get to a point when there is no temperature to read. And that is the opposite to ratio variables. Ratio variables, again, they're measured on a continuous scale, but they do have a true zero point. So for example, age, weight, and height, um, there's a zero point, you can't go beyond having no age, you can't go beyond having no weight, nor can you go beyond or be smaller than having no height. These four different variable types, so uh, nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio, they could be placed in a hierarchical order from a nominal to ratio as we can see on the diagram here. So why is hierarchy of variables important? Well, if you take the example of salary data, salary data is often recorded as an interval um, variable. So just a number, i.e., um, say, £1,250 a week being your average salary. Why do we record it as an interval variable? Well, we record it that way because we can do different things with it. So first of all, because it's an interval variable, we can actually do any form of mathematical operation, i.e. find the average salary. Secondly to that, because it's an interval variable, we can actually go down the hierarchy um, order and we can actually transform that variable into different, different types. So we can transform that into an ordinal variable or into a nominal variable. So if we actually collect salary as an ordinal variable, i.e. putting it into salary bands, then it becomes absolutely impossible to do any form of mathematical operations such as finding the average salary. So if possible, what we need to do is we actually need to collect this kind of data um, as uh, scale data. Okay, so these kind of issues you need to think about at the research design stage because it's no good making up a questionnaire where you want to collect salary data and formatting that as salary bands when actually you'd be better off just enabling people just to write down what their average salary was that you could do more with it when it comes to actually wanting to analyse your data. The research design phase needs to be built on what analysis is anticipated so that when you get there, you're not left wishing that you designed your research in a different way because you've now discovered that it can't give you the information um, that you need. It's, uh, it's no good. So hopefully that's given you a good idea of research questions and hypotheses.